welcome everybody to uh, your city council's informational meeting. Today is February 14th. Happy Valentine's Day, counselors, and all you out in the TV land. Not, but not you, Mr. Bixler. Um, this is the informational. It's four o'clock, and uh, I would call the meeting to order and have a staff report from Mr. David. Good afternoon, Councilors. Jim David, City Council Operations Manager. Last week, House Local Government rejected House Bill 1075. This, bu this bill would have repealed joint jurisdiction. House Judiciary also rejected House Bill 1166. This bill would have prohibited states, counties, municipalities, and school districts from entering into a confidential legal settlement unless done so by court order. As you know, the state allows a $2 per night occupational tax on hotel rooms within a CVB business improvement district. House Bill 1167 uh, would allow these bids the option to collect a 3% of the hotel room charge instead of the $2 fee. This charge would be at the discretion of the local governing body as long as those hotel and motel owners within the bid uh, come forward with the majority of petitions. House lo local government did approve this bill and it now awaits action on the House floor. And House, uh, House local government did reject House Bill 1167 last week. This bill would have allowed first class cities an opportunity to publish legal notices online. On the Senate side, Appropriations has approved Senate Bill 11, or excuse me, 113. This bill takes a carrot and stick approach to extending the sunset on the 911 or 911 surcharge by one year or 2019, but also creates basic compliance centers for those 911 call centers in the state. Senate Bill 121 has had no action in Senate Appropriations since last week's informational meeting. This bill would appropriate $3 million to fill the emergency radio coverage gaps and upgrade the state radios to P25, which is the national standard. With revenue projections as they are, this bill probably will have a difficult time in Senate appropriations. This slide is not in your packet. As you see, Senate Bill 153 really doesn't say much now, but was intended to be a vehicle or a means to amend the existing TIF statute pending discussions with various groups, including the South Dakota Municipal League. A short time ago, we were notified by the Municipal League that this bill will be withdrawn by its sponsor. In lieu of this bill, the Department of Re Revenue is expected to create some basic guidelines for cities and counties when it comes to TIFs. The next big milestone in the legislative calendar is next week, Thursday, when bills must be passed out of their house of origin. There is no legislative coffee this Saturday, but the next one is on the Saturday, February 25th at the Ramada. Representatives and senators from District 12, 14, and 15 will be present for your questions if you decide to attend. Happy to answer your questions. Are there any questions for Mr. David? I see that our um, former counselor had a little bit of a defeat last week. We happened to be in the deal for that on uh, Senate Bills 1075, or House Bill 1075, 10, 11766, if I can talk anymore. Um, and so uh, we wish him well in trying to uh, get those regrouped and uh, maybe done some other time. Any, uh, anything else? Seeing none, we'll move on. Uh, fiscal committee, the working session that you had, uh, Councilor Urpenbach. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We did have a working session. We met for over an hour um, last week, just starting that process of um, sort of collaborative thinking in terms of, of how do we deal with the uh, youth drug and alcohol prevention um, line item that's in our, continues to be in the city budget. And so um, we did have lots of great conversation. There are some notes um, available if, and the public um, can access them as well if you weren't able to attend. Um, the next steps that we'll be headed into, we will do one more working session just to kind of start to iron out where our thought processes are in terms of, of um, moving forward with this. And then um, we're going to invite the health department to be involved with that. We're, one of the thoughts that that fiscal committee has had is, is that line item in the right place in the budget. If it's gonna stay in the budget, is in the right place. So we're gonna talk to uh, the health department a little bit uh, um, at that next meeting. 
and then our budget analyst, um, Dave Bixler, is going to help us do some comparisons with some of the other school districts in the area. How are they managing that same need, and um, how are they paying for it? And so we'll be moving forward that way. We'll be back in um, more of a traditional setting for our meetings, not until April. So thank you. Good. Any questions for Councilor Erpenbach? Seeing none, thank you very much. We got open discussion. Any open discussion, Councilor Kiley? With your permission, I'd like to request uh, City Clerk Tom Greco to come up and just give us an update as to where he's at with the districting, redistricting yeah. process. Okay, thank you, uh, Tom Greco, City Clerk. Uh, so we are in the process of accepting applications and we, we have a few applications so far, but we still have at a minimum two districts that don't have applications for them. So um, just want to remind folks that the, the process is open. The deadline is the 23rd of February uh, at 5 p.m. The application is available online through the council webpage. Uh, and also uh, they could just call our office at 367-8080 and we'll email an application. Hard copies are over here. Uh, but what we've done in the past week to get the word out is uh, obviously there was a press release uh, last Tuesday. Uh, but also I've reached out and we have in our office the folks that we have in our um, Outlook contacts, uh, those who we think may be interested. So I've contacted all of our previous election workers uh, to solicit some, um, uh, some interest in that. Uh, but the, you know, the response rate obviously hasn't been great, but I have gotten some responses back. Uh, so as you're out and about, uh, obviously you all meet with a lot of folks. If you could spread the word uh, to get those applications in. And I'll be coming in uh, again before you next Tuesday uh, to give you an update on where we are and kind of the path forward with respect to the review and selection of them. Uh, so with that, I'll answer any questions. Are there questions for Mr. Greco? Yes, Councilor Staley. Um, how many, uh, what, what are those districts that you haven't heard from? They, I believe it's the Southeast and Northeast. Thank you. <clears throat> Okay, thank you very much, appreciate it. Okay, thank you. Other open discussion? Councilor Starr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I wanted to just update everyone that uh, the Living Library was held this weekend. I know I gave a little preview last week, but uh, it, it was so interesting to get a chance to talk with people that you wouldn't normally get a chance to speak with and take 15 minutes and uh, met a young lady who is a Native American artist who uh, has a studio and it was it was just so interesting to hear her passion for her art, um, for her being part of Sioux Falls and why she lives here and uh, it's one of the things that really make the uh, community great. Uh, the program really because it's February is Black History Month, a, a speaker talked about uh, growing up in the south um, in Louisiana um, and her grandmother was actually a slave. And my son, who's 15, really was amazed that someone who's alive today would understand, so, would know someone who actually was a slave or was part of slavery and how our country has evolved. And it really hasn't been that long, just a couple of generations removed from keeping other human beings as slaves. It was an amazing process to, to hear how she grew up and uh, maybe some of where she's at in her life because of the things that she learned living with her grandmother, the, um, uh, the starched white, everything had to be bleached and perfectly pressed. And she really felt that that had come from her grandmother and things being perfect and, and, and growing up the way she did and passing it on to generations and how we're still only a couple of generations removed from that. So again, the next Living Library is coming up in April. They're uh, soliciting people. Our own uh, assistant city clerk, uh, Denise Tucker, is one of the people who are involved in that. Uh, if, if it's something that you're interested in, talk with Denise, talk with Mark Blackburn. The, the group is just awesome, a chance to, to get to know our friends and neighbors who live here in Sioux Falls with us. So thank you. Along that same line, uh, the, there's a nice article or nice uh, piece couple of them uh, on a local TV station about our former uh, commissioner, Kenny Anderson, Absolutely. where Kenny Anderson Jr., one of our compadres, if you will, uh, talked about his father and uh, what it was like growing up in Sioux Falls uh, uh, during his time. So uh, yeah, some good stuff. Councilor Silver. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just thought I'd throw out, I attended my first legislative rib dinner get together in Pierre last week, me and a few others out here and uh, had some good quality time with some, a uh, few of the other counselors, met our legislators, 
um, saw the process, kind of how the sausage is made maybe on some of the programs. It was very interesting. Um, but no, it was a very worthwhile trip and probably had the best ribs I've ever had in my life. So I thought I'd better throw that out there. You'll be back next year, though. I probably will be. <laughs> Good. Councilor Urbanbach. Not quite as deep, possibly, but the City Council is a, is a wide variety of experiences, and so I just wanted to share the uh, All Saints neighborhood, or All Saints, uh, um, yeah, it is its neighborhood. They did their hot dish competition on Sunday, and it was pretty spectacular. You can, there was a whole debate about whether you call them hot dishes or you call them casseroles, depends on where you grew up. <laughs> But uh, there was judging involved and prizes, and it's for me it was it was fun, and I went as a judge and whatever, blah blah blah. But it was that one of those times when you look at our community and you go, this is really a great place to live. You know, yeah. it was just fun to be there, see folks um, hanging out with each other. The, that particular neighborhood is really growing and changing. Uh, there's a lot of younger folks coming in, and so it was just really a great great experience. You know, I don't often share the things that I do as a city council member, but it was one that was just just a blast to be at. So just. Cheers to All Saints. What did you uh, call that, hot dish? Hot dish, competish. Competish. Ooh, yes, like there were, dish. you know, hot dishes and then not dishes, that was without meat. And there were the, the tot dishes, which were the children's recipes. And then there were the bars, because you can't have a oh. hot dish without bars. Without a so bar, yeah. That, of course, And was a cup of part. egg coffee? No egg coffee. No, no egg coffee. It was, I guess they didn't hit that part of it. Oh, there were, maybe. there were two different kinds of beans, I mean, all kinds of great stuff. So it was oh. awesome. It's one of those great things about, you know, winter in the Great Plains. So it was, it was a fun experience. Yes, Councilor Neitzer. Just a, a little item of note. Uh, as you all know, on February 1st, Amazon started collecting sales tax. Um, I can report it is working, but there is a, there is a small <laughs> catch to that. And it took me a little bit to figure it out. If, if it is shipped from and it's fulfilled, and it's sold by Amazon.com, they collect sales tax. But if it is shipped from them and it's a third-party seller, which there is a lot of third-party sellers on there, including ones that do qualify for Prime, they don't collect sales tax. Mm. So you may notice in your shopping cart, you may not get collected sales tax in some cases, and some you do. So it'll be interesting to see when these collections and remittances start coming in, you know, what, what, how much it moves the needle. But it was something kind of interesting. It took me a little bit to kind of figure out what that nuance was so so you're saying that if if amazon has it in stock and they ship it to Councillor erickson and a part of her part of her order was also something that is shipped out of a company in tennessee but is paid for through amazon they're not going to collect a tax on that tennessee item yeah that that is correct amazon does a lot of fulfillment for third parties you buy it through amazon and it's coming from it may even be coming from one of their fulfillment facilities but if you read if you read on the on each item as you buy it it'll say ships from and sold by amazon.com or ships from greg's computer store and fulfilled by amazon.com those third party ones are not collecting on on their behalf so yeah, I did have one purchase that had zero sales tax and it threw me, but it, so it will be interesting to see what, you know, how, how much the Amazon effect is going to be mooted going forward. So. <clears throat> Councilor Kiley again. Quick clarification from uh, our city clerk, Tom Greco. He had said it, when the question was asked, and I believe it was Councilor Staley that asked the question, which districts are you lacking applicants from? He said southeast and northeast. It should be the southwest and northeast that we, we haven't seen. Is that correct? Nod your head. That's okay. So we need applicants yet from the southwest and northeast. Just exactly opposite of what you told us. <laughs> but you were thinking it was the ones you how, had. However, you could have multiple applications. You can have multiple apps from, from any district. That's correct. Good point. Good point. Okay. Um, that brings us to an end. Uh, Mr. Kiley, would you like to take us into executive session? Yes, I'd like to make the motion that we move into executive session regarding discussing the qualifications, competence, performance, character, or fitness of any public officer or employee or prospective public officer or employee. The term employee does not include any independent contractor. This is according to South Dakota Codified Law 125-21. Can I have a second? Second by Erpenbach. I would ask uh, everyone to, and this is at uh, 13.